hello guys welcome back to my channel please if this is your first time here you are welcome please don't forget to click on the red subscribe button down below and click the bell icon beside it thank you so much so the last update about joda and agba was how jalal and joda went to the temple to pray for rukaya and her unborn baby and later jalal and joda decided to go to a charity home for the children to also bless rukaya and her unborn baby but unfortunately jalal and joda got trapped but Jalal and Joda fought with the goons, and Jalal and Joda were freed. That was the last update. Let's continue from there. Jalal was in his room, and the doctor asked Jalal to apply the cream on his wounds. But Jalal says that he is fine, so the doctor should apply the cream on Joda's wound. Joda sits beside Jalal and says that she wants Jalal to apply the cream on his wound, because the cream is good for Jalal's wounds. And Jalal agrees, and the doctor applied the cream on Jalal's wounds. Jalal says to Joda that he should meet Rukaya now, but Joda stops Jalal and says that she doesn't think that Jalal should meet Rukaya in this state because Jalal is injured and Rukaya will not bear that someone attack Jalal and Jalal says that Joda is right so he would meet Rukaya later. Rukaya shouted at Oshia that Jalal was attacked and Oshia is just telling her now and Rukaya runs towards Jalal's room. Joda says to Jalal that they should not tell Rukaya about what happened because they are safe now. Jalal says that in this palace, news spread like fire and he is worried that if Rukaya gets to know from someone else, then Rukaya will be angry. Joda says that she have to go to Rukaya to give her sacred thread so she will talk to Rukaya indirectly about what happened and Rukaya will not be angry. Rukaya was running and all the wives talks that Rukaya is very angry and she will kill someone like this but she have to be careful for her child. Jalal says to Joda that Joda is right, so he would not tell Rukaya about what happened. Rukaya comes there and says that what will Jalal not tell her? Because Jalal got attacked and injured, and she got to know from the maid instead for her to hear it from Jalal. Rukaya says that there was a time that when Jalal sneezed, then she used to be the first to know, and she used to know either small or big things related to Jalal. Rukaya says that Jalal left the soldiers and went to an isolated place and someone attacked Jalal and kidnapped both Jalal and Joda. And Jalal and Joda fought with all the guns and come back in an injured state. And everyone knows this, even the maid knows, but she wasn't aware of it, so why? Jalal says that him and Joda thought, but Rukaya caught in and says that she doesn't care about anyone than Jalal. And she wasn't expecting this from Jalal because she thought that Jalal would tell her everything because firstly, she is Jalal's first wife and also Jalal's childhood friend. Jalal says that Rukaya is pregnant so he thought that it is not good to tell Rukaya and Rukaya should see how worried she is now. So that was why he decided to hide it from Rukaya. Rukaya says that she is worried, not because Jala was attacked, but she is worried because she got to know from a maid. Rukaya says that she knows that Jala can fight with the whole force of his enemy, but why did Jala not tell her about it first, and why is Jala snatching her right from her? Rukaya coughs and Joda says that Rukaya should calm down, but Rukaya asks Joda to leave her. Joda says that Rukaya should calm down because they are doing everything for Rukaya's good, but Rukaya says no, Joda is not doing anything for her good. Joda says that Rukaya should sit and she asks them to bring water. Rukaya says that she doesn't need Joda's sympathy and when she is talking to her husband, then she doesn't like anyone to interrupt and Jalal asks Rukaya to sit and Rukaya sits. Jalal says that Rukaya should look at him because he is fine and Rukaya says that what if anything happens to Jalal and what was the need to go to the jungle? Jalal says that there was need because Joda prayed for their child and they decided to also go to the orphanage to ask the kids to pray for their child and that was why he went with Joda. Joda says to Rukaya that she brought this sacred thread for Rukaya and Joda ties the thread on Rukaya's hand. Jalal says that Joda was with him and was worried that how will he fight with all the goons alone and how will he protect Joda. But Joda fought with all the goons alone and beat everyone. Joda says that Jalal is exaggerating and Jalal says that he is serious that Joda fought with all the goons and now he would always go anywhere with Joda and why should he even take soldiers with him when Joda is a great fighter and thank God that he is not Joda's enemy. Rukaya thinks in her mind that now Joda is more closer to Jalal and the more she tries to make Joda go away from Jalal, the more Jalal is talking about Joda. Rukaya says that she wants to go to her room and Jalal says that he will take Rukaya to her room. Jalal brings Rukaya to her room and Jalal makes Rukaya sit and says that Rukaya is still angry with him. Jalal says that this much anger is not good and Rukaya says that what if something had happened to Jalal? 
Jalal says that that was why he did not tell Rukaya because these days Rukaya talked a lot but he will not stop Rukaya from talking because he understands. Jalal says that he have to ask for forgiveness and he says that he is sorry special wife but Rukaya still refused to look at Jalal. Jalal kissed Rukaya's forehead and asks that is Rukaya happy now and Rukaya smiles. Jalal says that he will go now and Rukaya asks Jalal to tell Joda to come to her room and Jalal says okay and he goes. Rukaya looks at the thread that Joda tied on her hand and Rukaya breaks the thread and says that she doesn't need Joda's care, neither her prayers for her life because Joda is making Jalal go away from her. Adam comes to his room and Mam Anga comes there. Adam says that Mam Anga comes to him this time and Mam Anga asks that where was Adam. Adam says that he went to take revenge for Mam Anga because he couldn't bear it that Mam Anga was insulted and today Jalal and Joda were in his hands, but their fate saved them. Mam Anga says that did Adam attack Jalal and Joda, and Adam says yes, but they are saved, and if Adga did not come there, then Jalal's dead body would have come back to Agra. Mam Anga says that she is giving Adam the dagger, so Adam should kill her immediately, because she doesn't want to mourn on her son's death. Adam says that neither him nor Mam Anga would die, and it is only their enemies that will die. Mam Anga says that she doesn't know if to laugh or to cry on Adam's talks, because Adam did not know who Jalal is. Mam Anga says that Jalal is a king of the country, and he is the most powerful king, and if Jalal gets to know that Adam was against him, then Jalal would not spare Adam. Mam Anga sits on Adam's feet and says that she begged for pardon because she cannot bear her son's death. Adam says that Mam Anga should not do that and Mam Anga can shout at him but Mam Anga should not beg in his feet. Adam says that whenever he tried to kill Jalal, fate always saves him and Mam Anga says that Adam should promise her that he will not do any stupid thing again and she promised that she will not also disappoint Adam. Jala was washing his face and Adga says that after his investigation, he came to know who is behind the attack on Jalau and Joda in the jungle. Jalau says that he is a king and things happen with king, but his wife was with him and she was also attacked, so he will not spare the person who tried to attack Joda. And Adga says that what now? Jalau says that Adga should call all the ministers to the court and suddenly Jalau heard Joda singing and Jalau says that he will meet Adam later. And Jalal goes to Joda. Jalal comes to Joda, who was busy singing, and Jalal sits behind Joda and folds his hand in front of Krishna and smiles, looking at Joda. After the prayer, Joda stands up, and Jalal also stands up, and Joda turns and sees Jalal. Joda says, So Jalal is here, and Jalal says, That what can he do? Because whenever he listens to Joda's voice, he gets attracted to Joda. Joda does out it for Jalal, and Joda says that she wants to learn one thing from Jalal, and will Jalal teach her? Jalal says that what sort of joke is this, because Joda wants him to become a teacher, even though Joda knows that he is not educated, so Joda has found a way to make fun of him that he is an illiterate. Joda says that Jalal should not say that, because Jalal may not be educated, but Jalal have the knowledge that a lot of educated people did not have, and what she wants Jalal to teach her is that she wants to know how to pray like a Muslim, and how they take blessing from God, so she wants to learn. Jalal says really, and Joda says yes. Joda says that she knows many things already, because she had seen Salima and Amida offering prayers before, and Joda drapes Dupata on her head and says that they do it like this, then they sit and offers namaz, but she doesn't know what to say. Jalal and Joda comes to offer namaz, and Jalal kisses Joda's forehead and says that he would make Joda learn. Jalal offers namaz, and Joda also offers namaz with Jalal. After the namaz, Jalal sees bruises on Joda's hand, and Jalal says that Joda should meet him in the court, because he wants to pay back for every bruises that Joda had, and Jalal kisses Joda's forehead again, and he goes. In the court, everyone were present and Jalal comes there and he sits. Jalal says that someone attacked him and this time, Joda was with him and if his enemy thinks that they would attack his loved people and be pardoned, then they are wrong. Jalal says that he knows who attacked him and Mam Anga thinks that she has severally asked Adam not to do anything. Jalal asks them to bring the dead body and Jalal says that the dead goon ran away from him but his master killed him. Adka says that the goon has a special tattoo on his hand and he got to know whom he works for with the tattoo. 
Jalal says that he got to know that the goon works for someone who is between them, and the person is Razi Khan. Adam remembered his meeting with Razi Khan and offering him that because Razi is against Jalal, then if Razi helped him, then Razi would have the luxury of his life because he will give Razi any state after they kill Jalal. Razi says that the deal is good, and Adam says that it is not easy to kill Jalal, and Razi says that Adam should just tell him when Jalal comes out of the palace, because his goons are ready, and the flashback ends. Adga informs everyone that Razi is with the Rajvanshi king called Ramchand, and Jalal asks Adga to get their forces with Mahan Singh ready, because they have to attack Razi Khan. Mahan Singh comes to Joda and says that he is going on a war, so Joda should bless him because he is just afraid that the Rajvanshis would call him a betrayer because he have to fight against the Rajvanshi king. Joda says that Mahan needs to understand one thing, that enemy is enemy and without considering religion, Mahan have to fight for his right. Joda says that Jalal took the Mughal's betrayer under his support and Mahan is a Mughal soldier now, so Mahan have to follow the king's order and Mahan have to raise their pride and Joda does Mahan's out. Jalal comes there and Jalal says that he is sure of Mahan's capacity and excellence and he is happy that Mahan is with him in this war and now he wants to take revenge on who tried to injure Joda and Mahan says okay because the betrayer will be brought to Jalal soon and Jalal says that Mahan should go for the war and Mahan leaves. Shenaz was going and she sees some maids going with a painting covered with clothes and Shenaz asks that whose painting is this? The maid says that it is the painting of one of Humayun's wife and Shenaz should not touch it because it will get dirty and Jala will be angry. The maid says that they are going to put the painting in the museum and the maid goes to the museum and place the painting there. Shenaz thinks that whose painting is this and Shenaz asks the maid to make her see the painting even if it is only once and they takes off the clothes from the painting and it was Chan's painting and Shenaz was surprised and she got emotional to see her mother's painting and the maid asks Shenaz not to touch the painting and they leaves. Shenaz comes to her guidance house and she says that can they talk outside and they sit to talk. Shena says that she saw her mother's picture in the palace today and the guardian says that then, that means that they remember Shena's mother, so they brought her picture out. Shena says no, it seems like the painting was just made now and the guardian says that so, Jalal is trying to find Shena's mother. Shena says that she sent a letter to Jalal by putting it in Joda's palanquin for Jalal to know what he did. Shena says that she knows that Jalal had kidnapped her mother so that she cannot claim that she have the right on the daily thrones as well because their father Umayun gave the right to her and now Jalal is pretending to find her mother when Jalal was the one that actually kidnapped her mother and she is sure that Jalal has put her mother in a secret prison. The guidance says that Shena has have to protect herself and Shena says that she wants to know what Jalal think about her mother and she just wants to know where her mother is. The guidance says that maybe someone else was the one that kidnapped Shena's mother so that Shena doesn't get to the throne. But Shena says that she knows that her mother is alive and she has tried to find her everywhere, but she couldn't. But only one place is left, and that place is the prison of the Agra Palace. Shena thinks that how will she know the truth and how will she know if her mother is in the prison? But she knows that her mother is in Agra and Jalal has hidden her mother somewhere that nobody can find her. Rukaya was sleeping and Jalal comes there and asks if he can come in. Rukaya gets up and says that Jalal doesn't need permission, so Jalal should come in. Joda comes there too and Rukaya thinks that she knew that Joda would not leave Jalal alone. Jalal and Joda comes in and Jalal says that Joda has brought a beautiful gift for Rukaya's child and Rukaya says that Joda should give the gift to the maid. Jalal says that will Rukaya not see the gift and Rukaya says why not and Jalal asks them to bring the gift in and they bring the swing bed for the baby. Rukaya sees the gift and says that it is beautiful and Joda always gives great gift. Jalal says that he is waiting for the day that his child will lie down in this swing and Rukaya thinks in her mind that she feels pained that Jalal's dream will be only dream forever because it will not come to pass. Jalal says that he is also waiting for the day that his child would hold his hand and walk with him and when his child will call him Baba and Jalal gets emotional. Rukaya says that there is tears in Jalal's eyes and Jalal says that tears comes out in happiness and sadness and Jalal sits near Rukaya's tummy and talks to his child. 
Jalal says that he is the child's father and he is waiting for the child to come because his aunt has gifted him a swing bed, so the child should come soon. Joda says that she knows that this child is very important to both Jalal and Rekaya and she prays every day for the child's safety. Jalal says that when his child comes into this world, he will tell him that Joda is the reason that he is in this world. Jalal says that he has lost his child before and was broken, but now he cannot bear this to happen again, so Rukaya has to take care of herself a lot, and Jalal asks Joda to come with him, but Rukaya says that can Joda stay with her because she feel good to be with Joda. Jalal says that he have to talk about something important with Joda, so can he go with Joda at least for now, and Rukaya says okay, and Jalal and Joda goes out. Rukaya thinks that what has she done? because she has come too far playing this game and now she cannot even go back. Jalal brings Joda to Umayun's room and Jalal says that the room is now a museum. Joda says that she doesn't know that Jalal have interest in history and Jalal says that he was not the one that set everything up and it was Amida. Joda says Chan's picture and Joda says that Chan is the same as the painting. Jalal says that he asked the artist to make the painting after Joda got the letter and Jalal says that what did Joda think about Chan and what happened to Chan that she was lost for many years and now she is sending letter for help. Joda says that she doesn't know anything but she understands Jalal's emotion. Jalal says that Chan is his mother after all and when he finally finds her, then his father will be at peace and he is worried that he is a king but he cannot help Chan and people will think that it is because Chan is not his real mother and that is why he did not help her. So he wants to know everything about that letter, whether the letter was true or somebody is playing games with him. Joda says that why would anybody do this? And Jalal says, firstly, someone sent Joda a letter and he ordered his people to find out about it and then he was attacked with Joda. So maybe they don't want him to find Chand. Jalal says that they don't want him to find Chand and maybe some secret is with Chand and Joda says that Adgar investigated their attack and it was done by Razi Khan. Jalal says that Razi would not attack them on his own so someone helped Razi and the person is related to Chand. Joda says that if this is the case then Jalal have to find Chand because the person who can attack a king can attack Chand. Jalal says that if Chand is alive then he promised Joda that he will find her and he has also found out that Chand has a daughter and it is his mission to find Chan's daughter and give her right to her and Joda says that she is sure that Jala will find Chand and her daughter. Alright before I go, I would like to make a little announcement. I've been seeing you guys comment in my comment section and if you guys notice you will see that I did not reply to any comment since yesterday because since that yesterday morning till now I've been down with malaria and cold and yet I'm still trying my best to give you guys updates and yet some low life people are still dropping hate comments on my videos. Don't worry, I'm not angry because of your comments because I delete it immediately. And thanks to everyone who dropped good comments and thanks to everyone who dropped good suggestions. I will reply to all your good comments and good suggestions by tomorrow. But by tomorrow, if you did not see me reply to your comment, just know that that your comment is trashy and it is in the trash box. And I'm pained because I can't see you face to face and you tell me that nonsense you are dropping in the comment section face to face. Then you would have seen the in Daboski side of me people that have lived with me before knows exactly what i'm talking about right now because <laughs> anyways thank you so much guys for watching i'll see you all again in my next video bye guys